Back when I made the Poke Champions video, I was mulling over the thought of talking about smaller subclasses in more detail. There is another group with comparably low roster size in League of Legends. I know I talked about them quite a bit since I made a Why No One Plays on like more than half of them, and then of course the Tanks video, but there's some more things I want to talk about, so today we're going to be going back into the tank class and touch on Wardens in League of Legends. Aside from a few exceptions like Shen, Leona, and Nunu, the tank class has seen better days. They're probably ranked as the lowest collective pick rate second only to specialists, which isn't saying much considering specialists are almost all pocket picks. But between vanguards and wardens, wardens see drastically less play on top of being less than half the size of vanguards. Just a quick refresher since it's been a while, tanks are divided into two subclasses, vanguards and wardens. Vanguards are offensive tanks while wardens are defensive tanks. More specifically, rather than hard engaging on the enemy team, Wardens prioritize disruption, disengage, and ally protection, and that can come in more ways than just crowd control. Almost everyone knows what engage and lockdown are. Engage is when a player or team commits to initiating action and interaction with their enemies, such as when Nautilus tosses dredge line to catch someone out. Lockdown is a champion's ability to keep their targets in a favorable position through the usage of hard crowd control such as stuns and roots. Disengage and disruption are a bit different. Disengage, also known as peel, is when you and or your team is able to easily force enemies and their pressure off of you as quickly as possible. It's a bit more ambiguous because engage can also be seen as disengage. If Lee Sin dashed in for an insect, kicking the enemy Caitlyn towards your team, that counts as engage. But when running away and the enemy Rammus is trying to run into your face, but Lee Sin kicks him away from your team, that's disengage. Though it doesn't always have to be crowd control. Kindred's Lens Respite counts as disengage. It prevents anyone standing within the circle from dying. So any pressure that would befall your team is neutralized, at least temporarily. Disruption is when a champion is able to stop the opponent from doing something. In a manner of speaking, it's a subcategory of Lockdown since Lockdown has the same basic principle. The key difference is that Disruption is either quick or short. Thresh's Filet is the best example. It's a very tiny displacement, but even a short one is enough to catch enemies mid-dash, stop channels, or even keep people from running away or push them away from you. When in doubt, a way to distinguish Wardens is if they have abilities designed to be used reactively as opposed to proactively. So since the list is so small, I suppose we can go through each Warden at a time and explain what's in each of their kit that designates them as such. Braum is arguably the epitome of a Warden. Considering his weapon of choice is a big-ass shield, he has three abilities that can assist his allies in battle. The first being his passive, which stuns a target after being hit with a combination of four attacks and or Winter Spike. To my knowledge, Braum is the only champion in the entire game who can give his teammates a stun, as in all he has to do is land a single attack, and he can walk away, the champion will get stunned by someone else. The other two abilities are Stand Behind Me, which can only be used on ally units, and Unbreakable, which intercepts projectiles in a certain direction, even point and click ones that are meant to target someone behind him. Galio has only one ability, but that's all he needs. Hero's Entrance is a semi-global ultimate that targets an ally champion, giving every teammate in the area the magic damage shield from his W before crashing down with a giant area-wide knockup. Really solid ultimate to use both for follow-up engage and counter engage. Poppy has one guaranteed warden type ability, and another one that's kind of warden-y, if that's even a word. Steadfast Presence is her primary interception. She creates an aura around herself that interrupts any enemy that dashes within it or into it and grounds them for 2 seconds, essentially forcing them to walk in or out of the fight. The full Channel Keeper's Verdict is technically classified as a defensive ability since it always knocks enemies a far distance towards the enemy team's fountain, no matter where you are on the map. I've never seen Poppy use the full power knockback in an aggressive way, so it's safe to make the conclusion that she has two defensive abilities. Shen also has two. Spirit's Refuge creates what can only be appropriately described as a public Jax Counter-Strike zone which blocks all incoming hostile basic attacks and whatever effects they come with for a short duration. So not only does it block damage from like a Renekton W, but it also negates the stun. Of course, we know his legendary ultimate Stand United, very similar in function to Galio's except instead of a wide knockup, it's a massive shield. Once again, a very effective tool for either follow-up engage or counter engage. Tom Kench is in a weird spot. In fact, I might call him a specialist or more of a juggernaut instead of a warden because of the rework. He had two ally affecting abilities in the form of Devour and Abyssal Voyage. Now that those two abilities are swapped, he technically only has one. And I feel like people exclusively use his new Devour aggressively since you can only use it once every two minutes as opposed to every 20 seconds like before. I don't think it's all that great of a defensive ability anymore, but out of respect for his original design, he's still a warden. Last but not least, Mr. Fabulous himself. Tarek is a hybrid between Enchanter and Warden, and is the only one of the six who can heal his teammates. 
Pretty much all of his abilities count as board in things because they all affect allies, even Dazzle, since it extends out of whoever he tethers to. Heals, shields, and AoE invincibility doesn't get much better than that. So as you can see here, wardens don't necessarily need to have direct ally support, as in they don't need to have abilities that grant shields, nor do their effects have to benefit strictly allies. Most of the time, Poppy, Galio, Braum, Tom Kench, Tarek, and Shen will likely be charging headfirst into the enemy team instead of hanging next to their backline, exactly the same way as vanguards. But their way of applying pressure comes in the form of intercept or guard type abilities, not lockdown. Although they have a little bit of lockdown too, being tanks and all, they're cut from the same cloth. In regards to the subclass as a whole, I'd say the most pressing concern is why there are so many more vanguards than wardens. I talked about this before, I don't remember if it was the Braum video or Tarek one, but I didn't go as in depth on it as I wanted to. Try to think about it like this. As a class, what do marksmen provide? Range DPS. AD carries bring more than enough damage for your team to defeat the enemy team. What do mages provide? Magic damage. What do controllers provide? Utility and control. Tanks supply the highest amount of crowd control per individual champion out of any class by far. Three of Alistar's abilities supplies lockdown, Nautilus also has three sources of lockdown, Leona has three as well, Rel has four, so on and so forth. Wardens are able to pull off a lot of fancy tricks to assure victory for their team. That much is undeniable. But if the ultimate goal in League is to wipe out the enemy team in order to secure objectives and then blow up the enemy nexus, it doesn't really matter how that's done as long as you do it. You as Braum might block a crazy amount of damage through your Unbreakable, you might pull off an insane 5-man Cosmic Radiance as Tarek to win the fight, you might clutch out a win by casting Stand United on your AD carry right before they get bursted. All of those plays are cool, but they're not the only way to go about it. Instead of blocking an entire Misfortune ultimate as Braum, couldn't you also have picked Nautilus and pressed R on her then Q and Auto to chain stun her for 30 years before she even could attack? Instead of getting a 5-man invincibility, wouldn't it just be easier to play a big bulky tank like Alistar and knock everyone up so they can't attack? Pragmatically speaking, why go through the trouble of waiting for them to make a move when you can strike first and never have to deal with that in the first place? Therein lies the problem. Whatever wardens do, vanguards can sorta of do better. There's rarely a situation in which the unique abilities provided by those six wardens overshadow normal hard crowd control. Now, I understand those intercepts and disengages aren't the only thing they provide. Tarek can heal his team, Braum gives a stun, Poppy has some insane lockdown of her own, etc. But the end goal is still the same. Your team needs a tank who can soak up a lot of damage. Doesn't matter how it's done, as long as it's done. Generally speaking, wardens are vanguards but with an extra step, and that reduces the overall practicality of those champions. Braum's shield only works on projectiles, not melee attacks. A big-ass Malphite ultimate works on everything. That's how broken crowd control is in League of Legends. When a champion is stunned, they can neither attack nor defend. They can't move or use abilities. They can't use items or do anything. So if you have a champion with a bunch of stuns and knockups, why is defensive utility necessary? Just kill them before they kill you. Sadly, that's the mentality present in not just the majority of players in the League community, but even the champion design team. The reason they're producing more vanguards than wardens is because vanguards are not only more practical, but more fun and exciting. I'm sure we've all had those games where the Malphite or Amumu or Zac got a 5-man ultimate and solo won the game off that play. You don't really have the same kind of poggers moment on wardens like Braum, Tom Kench, or Galio. Sure, they have explosive abilities themselves, but on average, no one really freaks out when they see a Shen ultimate the way they see a 5-man Rel ult, you know what I mean? And in light of the extra steps you have to take, wardens are generally much harder to play. Vanguards don't really have to care about how things are going for their allies, all they gotta do is CC as many people and soak up as much damage as possible, and that's pretty much a good job. Aside from landing skill shots, it's pretty hard to mess up on a Vanguard. Not the same for Wardens. Braum has to figure out which ally to dash to, where to direct his shield, Tarek has to decide who to tether to, how to aim the stuns, when to use his ultimate, Poppy has only a 2 second window to deter enemy dashes, and she has to be careful with Keeper's Verdict so as not to accidentally knock away the wrong targets. A lot more can go wrong when playing a Warden, and even if you do fully master that champion, a Vanguard can achieve the same outcome through a less convoluted way. Stun the enemy team, then you don't have to worry about when to block damage because there is no damage. To make matters even worse, the Enchanter subclass excels in defensive utility, which, at that point, it beggars belief if Wardens bring anything of value to the table that isn't supplied by other classes for much less work. When it comes to similarities in function, for other classes anyway, there's a big enough divide in the nuances of those jobs. For example, vanguards and divers share an identical purpose of being the primary engage for their team. Where they differ is of course how that engage takes place. 
Divers don't possess anywhere near as much lockdown as vanguards, but they do have the damage, forcing the enemy team to be extremely wary of the incoming threat and focus on that first before anything else. Vanguards don't have the kill power to explode anyone on the enemy team, so instead of worrying about them, the enemy team has to be careful about where their teammates are to prepare for the incoming follow-up. As a diver, you are public enemy number one in a fight. As a vanguard, the people behind you are the main threat. Mind you, I'm not implying Wardens have nothing special going for them. In fact, I consider Braum, Shen, Galio, and Poppy some of the most creatively designed tanks in the game, and I think there's definitely something to this defensive tank category that can be tapped into. The question is what, and more importantly how. It's been made clear there's potential for interesting champion design, and perhaps a way for tanks to see a resurgence in popularity after having slowly declined over the latter half of the game's first decade. But with how all-purpose and valuable hard crowd control is, it's not going to be easy to give them a sense of individuality through conventional means. Probably wouldn't make all too much sense to give Wardens more damage, seeing how they're defensive tanks. Kind of counterintuitive. But Wardens have one thing going for them that might be able to set them apart from vanguards and enchanters. Territorial Protection Tarek, Galio, Poppy, and Shen have abilities in their kits that create areas of safety. Tarek's Cosmic Radiance, Galio's Heroic Entrance, Poppy's Steadfast Presence, and Shen's Spirit Refuge essentially communicate to their teammates, stand within this area, you will be safe. If you stand in Tarek's ultimate, you become invincible. If you stand in Shen's W, you'll be safe from basic attacks. Stand in Poppy's W, and no one can dash towards you. Stand in Galio's ultimate, and you'll get a shield. How this differs from the area manipulation the controller subclass exerts is the same difference between vanguards and divers. Catchers like Thresh, Zyra, and Morgana can render huge areas of a fight dangerous for the enemy team to go through, but they don't exactly do anything beneficial for your team aside from stopping the enemy team. Wardens can potentially do just that, be able to create supportive fields for their team that provide valuable boosts or utility. You can think of it almost like Sona, who has aura effects that augment her teammates simply by being around her. I know there used to be a lot of items that had aura effects in the past, but they were removed on account of overinflating stats a little too much and not having meaningful effects. But what if we were to attach those to Wardens instead? After all, the Warden class bears a striking resemblance to the Paladin class in MMORPGs. Paladins were basically a hybrid between healers and tanks. Rather than just purely soak up damage, this class would be able to offer buffs and supportive utility for their party. Not as much as the likes of the Priest or Cleric, but you know, a respectable amount. Hypothetically, we could design a Warden with an ultimate that would create a force field that only allies could enter, and it would have all incoming damage from the outside, not unlike Kindred's ultimate in terms of stalling for time. Creating a safe zone where squishies can run into when they're under heavy fire and give them a moment's reprieve would probably be very popular considering how burst-heavy the game has been over the years. We could also have Wardens who do terrain manipulation. For example, Azir's Emperor's Divide prevents enemies from walking through it while allies can freely do so. If there was a champion who could build walls or pillars and move them around to block off enemies, I think that'd be pretty cool. Alternatively, we could design a Warden who could create an energy field where all ally projectiles that fly through it gain bonus range, speed, and damage, like how Jason's Acceleration Gate empowers a Shock Blast. Of course, take these ideas with a grain of salt, I just came up with them on the fly. But who knows, maybe you guys might have some interesting champion concepts for Wardens. I think there's definitely a lot of wasted potential with this subclass. The one thing I don't like about Vanguards is how they all start to feel the same after a while. Like, there's not much of a difference in experience between the support Vanguards, Leona, Nautilus, Alistar, and Rel. They sort of start to feel monotonous. Same with the jungle Vanguards like Amumu, Zack, Sejuani, and Rammus. But there is a huge difference in playstyle between Poppy, Taric, and Braum for instance. Could be something to look into. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Don't forget to follow me on my socials and join my Discord server if you haven't yet. Also, check out my other videos after this one. I have a ton of discussion topics that might interest you. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.